Hello and welcome to part 2 of modeling bivariate regression in OpenMX. This video will show you how to perform a significance test on a regression coefficient of a path model. In the previous video, we modeled this equation, y equals b0 plus b1 times x plus error. In practice, we are usually interested in testing if there is a linear effect of x on y. That is, if the value of b1 is 0 or not. In the structural equation modeling, or path analysis framework, we ask the same question by comparing model likelihoods. In this case, we can compare the likelihood of these two models. These models look very similar, but there is a key difference. In the left model, we are modeling an effect from x to y called b1. This effect is estimated freely by OpenMX and theoretically can be any number. The model on the right has this value fixed to zero. Because these models are nested, that is, you can create one model from the other by only adding or subtracting paths, we can compare them using a likelihood ratio test. This will give us a p-value based on a chi-square distribution. This tests the null hypothesis that the more constrained model that is, the model with b1 fixed to 0, fits the data just as well as the model with b1 free to vary. If p is very small, we can reject this hypothesis and say that b1 is a significant path in our model. It is important to note that we could have simply deleted the path between x and y and achieved the same effect. Now let's begin. Starting from where we left off in the previous video, we will be creating a model to test if the value of b1 is 0 or not. We do this by creating a new model called MyModel2. The first argument to this new model is our original model, MyModel1. If we were to stop here, then MyModel2 would be identically MyModel1. We are going to name this new model B1Test. We are then going to create a new MX matrix. This new matrix is the A matrix for our new model. By specifying this new A matrix, we are overriding the A matrix in the previous model. In this model, we set the value of B1 in our previous model to be 0. We also fix this value by setting free equal to false and by giving it no label for this parameter. This effectively sets the b1 parameter in this model to be equal to 0. In comparing the A matrix of this model with that of the original model, these differences are apparent. We can now run and inspect this new model. Unlike our original model, this model does not have a b1 parameter. This model is known as the restricted model. Now that we have our original or full model, we can use the mxCompare function to test whether or not the restricted model fits the data as well as our full model. The first argument to this function is our full model, and the second argument is our restricted model. We can then run mxCompare. When we run mxCompare, we get this table. The first two columns, base and comparison, tell us which models we are working with and how we are comparing them. EP is the number of estimated parameters in these models. Minus 2 LL are the minus 2 log likelihood of the full model and restricted model respectively. DF is the degrees of freedom for these models. AIC is an information criterion letting us know how well these models fit in comparison to one another. Usually, models with a lower AIC value are better fits to the data than models with higher AIC values. Diff LL is the difference in log likelihoods of these two models, and Diff DF is the difference in degrees of freedom. Finally, we have a p-value associated with the likelihood ratio tests between these two models. If this value is significant, we can say that the restricted model does not fit the data as well as the unrestricted model. In this case, that means that our model with the b1 parameter estimated is much better than a model for which b1 is equal to 0, indicating that the b1 path is meaningful and worth modeling. Thanks for watching.